case you are unaware, Saga has returned today. I'm so excited. I want to talk about issue 55. I want to do a little bit of a review on it. But of course, I want to talk about the other issues that predicated this. And I want to kind of gush about this story. This story proves a lot to a lot of people. It proves that you can do really deeply heavy-handed politics, whether it's about war or abortion or sex work. You can do those. Have it not only be successful, but an amazing read. Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples create this world that never should have existed. This is one of those you will never see on streaming service because it would be a lot of CGI and nearly impossible. But it sold well. It started out slow. And then it got, you know, it got picked up. It is one of Image's longest running titles. And people have been waiting for this. For three years. And actually there's a three year time jump in it also. I don't know if that was done on purpose. Because of the the, uh, COVID. But I I was so happy to see this back. Not only are they proving that you can do those things. They're also showing big companies. That you can have an oversized 44 page comic book. With amazing art and amazing storytelling. For $2.99. Two ninety nine, like honestly, it's amazing. We're gonna add a little bit more to this. They have no variant covers, and I can just about guarantee. I, I'll we'll look back at it here when the Comic Con sales numbers come out for January. But no variant covers, no schemes, no nothing. I will about bet you this is the best seller of January. I would say or top 10, but no, we're just going to go ahead and say this is probably going to be the best seller of January. It is going to do really well. And um, I could be wrong, but I don't see it that way. I really don't. This is a series that is beloved by many, and it is a series that sells really well. And it is all of those things I just said, but it's a lot more than that, too. It's about survival. It's about it's Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Meet space, meet insanity, meet relatively progressive politics, meet war, meet... Uh, it, there's just so much. And then it's all... I love Brian K. Vaughn. If you are... If you have been at this channel for any length of time, you know what a fan I am of Why the Last Man. And if not, then basically... I love Brian K. Vaughn. He's a phenomenal writer, but he does do heavy-handed politics, so some people don't care for that. He does this in such a fluent way that I really, really enjoy his work. This, though, why I don't... Yeah, this is better than why. This is better than why. I, maybe it's just because I'm excited it's brand new and it's out. Um, but yeah, I would say this is probably my favorite Brian uh, series, right? Definitely not Swamp Thing. Just just saying. Just Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to go into the Tefe stuff. But let's take a look at it. Now, basically what we see, in case you're unfamiliar, is um, spoilers from here on out, right? Spoilers. Okay. Marco in issue 54 died. Except for when you leave a cliffhanger like that, When you leave a cliffhanger like that for three years, you have people like me going, um, did Marco die? I mean, I saw him die on the panel, but did he, maybe, maybe they're going to go to the Batman universe. Maybe they're going to get some Lazarus, you know, Lazarus resin. They've got that now. Maybe they'll bring it back. You know, you you never know with Saga, right? He's not dead. Marco's not dead. Margo's not dead, right? So for three years, I was like, back and forth. I mean, obviously, I knew Marco was dead. And it will confirm it in here when we see Gwendolyn. But it just, this story, I'm telling you what. I really think, even if you're not into those type of stories, give it an issue. If you don't like it, I get it. I do. I think the first issue is free, and it's free on, um, pretty sure it's free on Unlimited Comicsology Unlimited. So, We've got, of course, um, you know, everybody back. We've got Hazel, 
who is now 10 years old. Uh, oh, Fiona Staples art. The way she created this entire world amazes me because like I, I some of the designs are absolutely batshit insane, right? So we get Hazel basically being a very naughty little girl. And of course, uh, just to point out, she did get her horns from Marco. Um, we will get a little bit of a reveal here in a second, though. Um, stealing. And then, <laughs> oh, honey, where's your mama? Basically, she said uh, she runs away and she's like, no, I, this guy, that guy's a monster. He touched me. He didn't. She stole from him. But um, she's trying to do anything she can to get away. Well, we end up having one of the blue come in. Um, and Hazel's obviously fluent in blue. But um, it, she, they're a terrorist, right? They're a terrorist and they blow stuff up. And we come and that gives us our reveal that not only did Hazel get the best of Alana or Marco, I'm sorry. She also got her wings from her mother, which is really cool um, that she got it from both. So that's that was an awesome reveal. Now, I can't go much further down. So if the screen gets a little blurry here in a second or, you know, a black box or something along those lines, you know, because there is some nippleage and I'm going to have to edit it out. Um, but we see Alana. Now, I want you to just keep in mind that this is a grift, right? Um, because we saw her breastfeed. <laughs> We saw her breastfeed Hazel in, in the first couple issues, right? So, um, basically, she is trying to sell formula, right? Like, formula is a brand new thing. It's crazy concept. You can feed your baby formula, and women, you can go to work. You don't have to be down by the patriarchy. She even says it's just another tool of the patriarchy used to keep us down. And, uh, and she brings in the... Basically, she says, I bring in the horny husbands by showing my tits and I sell their wives some stuff when they think these uh, she's making fun of older white women. Right. She calls them, uh, you know, these fake woke women. So um, we see our new character. Right. Who um, Alana was getting in trouble and we see him come in. And I and that's what I'm saying. Like Fiona Stable amazes me. This is such a weird design. Like, OK. All right. So um, his name is Bombazine, and he pretends to be her husband, basically gets her out of trouble, and she's a little irritated about it, but of course, they're in this together. So we go back to the ship, and um, we find the prince's son. They have the prince's son, and, and, and they are raising him, right? Um, Squire is his name, and he... Since everything happened previously, he actually doesn't even talk now, right? So um, they're trying the best they can. They have like a nurse, but it's clear they don't really have enough money to pay her. They're living paycheck, not even paycheck to paycheck. It's more like grift to grift, right? So um, we do get to see a little blast from the past. I love, I love, I, I want to mention here, we get to see Gwendolyn, but one, my favorite part, of this entire not okay not the my favorite part of the entire series but one of my favorite things was the lion cat like if you can tell this cat can tell when someone's lying and you'll see here in a minute we've got the the will and gwendolyn here gwendolyn in case you are unfamiliar used to be married or engaged i'm sorry to marco right so we're going to see what he brings. And this is where it's going to give us a uh, confirmation, right? We see Marco's Marco's carcass. So Marcus is, or Marco is officially dead. And, and um, she's super happy about it. So yeah, we're going to fly through this because I'm going to have to edit it out anyway. Um, so happy she fucks him, basically. And anyway, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can't show all of this. Again, $2.99. But the kids end up having fun. Um, I love this part here. I actually remember this. I grew up on old rock and roll music. My dad was an old Brody, and I grew up listening to anything, right? Alice Cooper, Aerosmith, uh, ZZ Top, Led Zeppelin, Ozzy Osbourne. It was, it was always around the house. And when I discovered my own music, right? When I discovered my own music, it was like this amazing kind of thing because I always 
thought that was, you know, I, I was always going to listen to that stuff. Right. And I, and I really did. And um, when I discovered my own music and I, and I totally thought like I was a rebel listening to Slipknot or even when I, even younger, like I discovered Hanson. Hanson, yes. Mm, bop, dip, dip, bop, bop. Anyways, um, and I thought I was like the cool. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Too many times dancing around, but not with a not with a, somebody like Squire. So, um, they discover their own music, and I really like it. But um, I love I love that they're dancing around, and you know he's gone through a lot of trauma, Squire, and he's gone through so much, and he's so happy, and he's got fireworks. Oh my god. How freaking cute is that? So um, this Fiona, like beautiful, they they come across the pirate. They're getting attacked, right? I just, I, I cannot stress how beautiful this is to you. This is, I guess you get a little bit better look here, but absolutely stunning. I love the work that Fiona does on this. And I, I'm just... And I love, look, he's, he's, he's scared. He's scared. Squire may be my new favorite thing. He, he really might. So um, basically he goes to get this and he's about to eat it, right? And she's like, no, 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 baby. No, no, no. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. And they're like, um, she's trying to explain it to the kids. <laughs> she's like, we're smugglers. I love that look on her face. And, and, you know, of course, Hazel's like, we were drug dealers. <laughs> he just, just fucking love it. And, of course, that's why they're getting attacked. But that look on her face is so good. I love this series. Um, It's so nice to see that it's back. It really, really is. I'll put this picture up. It's so good, right? Um, This is such a good read. For uh, you, you can't argue with not only the price. You can't argue with how the story is coming along, the return, the excitement of the return, the fact that this indie book went from low sales and gradually increased. The fact that people love getting these volumes or compendiums, the fact that it actually even got to return in an image comic got to 55 besides, you know, of course, the obvious, but is amazing. And I really, really hope they continue this story as long as it can possibly go. Of course, I don't want it to get it reductive and in circular storytelling because we haven't got there yet. But it's such a good book. Honestly, I, I, I wish more people would check it out. So loved it. 10 out of 10. Let me know. Of course, I don't do numbers. Why did I say 10 out of 10? It's not me. It was amazing. <laughs> there, there we go. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.